everyone. This is Bruno with a new segment called 10 Minutes or Less with Bruno No BS. Very simple and casual interview to do. No fancy cameras here. Today I have the honor to speak with the CEO of one of the largest roofing companies in our industry. A legend and my friend Mark from Tech America. How you doing, Mark? How's everything? I'm doing well, Bruno. How about yourself? I'm doing good. So far, so good. Listen, um, I got a couple of questions for you. You know, it's like 10 minutes or less. My first question is, how long have you been in our roofing industry? So I, uh, I started almost 20 years ago. Um, I started with Tech. That was my first uh, job in the industry um, in 2001. Wow. Okay. So when did you realize roofing would be a career for you? Right then. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I came into the industry different than a lot of other people. Tecta had formed um, just 20 years ago, 20, um, a year before I started, and they were searching for somebody to, to kind of run the overall, the overall company. I did not come from the industry. I had some different, you know, broad, different level of experience. And right. um, I met um, Don McNamara and John Miller, who were two of the kind of key founders of Tecta right. when they were doing that search and um, really got to know them and the company and uh, love the people that I interacted with and agreed to start. So I always had that feeling, you know, until I spoke with you and Nicole and uh, other people from Tecta America. I was under the impression that Tech America was a franchise company until I realized it's not a franchise company. It, it is a company right. that, so what is the mentality at, at, at uh, Tech America? How did that work with the process? Um, so Tech to came together. It's really um, kind of a, an interesting story and I'll try to keep it brief, but in the late nineties, there were other consolidations or roll-ups going on. Um, and I won't mention any names, but there were a number of them that were being led by financial investors. Right. Um, and Tecta, the, the founders of Tecta saw these things going on and had been invited in some cases to participate in those. And they decided they didn't want to do that. They wanted to build their own um, company. They, they liked the idea of a national firm and being able to share resources and best practices mm -hmm. and you know, be big and take advantage of you know, what, what size brings you. But they didn't want to give up running the business day to day. And they also felt that the local um, management, the local entrepreneur was really critical. And so it's a long story how they found each other, but they used an outside firm to help them do that. And otherwise they went, uh, used their personal relationships and um, spent two years uh, getting to know each other, um, mm -hmm. you know, every month um, and really understanding that there are a lot of different ways to, to be a successful roofing contractor and that sharing information might help them do that. So at the end of those two years, they, they put the company together. Um, but one single company, not a franchise, uh, deal. Um, and February, 2000 kind of kicked it off. I, I absolutely understand that because, you know, every state, you know, they have, they might have a different mentality, you know, uh, or even, even the region that you live, you know, they might have a certain, uh, uh, culture and even sources they are different than you know if you work if you roof in Florida if you roof uh, you roof in a state that is very hot humidity so you know you have work every day you know then you have uh, you know other areas that you know is part of union so it's a little bit different um, tell me another uh, I have another question how does it feel for you to be the CEO CEO of one of the largest roofing company in our nation which you guys have, I think, 79 five branches. Is that, am I correct? That's right. Okay, so how do you feel? Like, is that a lot of pressure to be like a... Um, over yeah, there? No, you know, it, it's not. It, it, I mean, yes, sometimes, uh, any job, you know, all jobs have some pressure with them. And, um, and mine's probably not any different than that. But um, I'm just proud of, uh, really, mostly proud uh, of the company. Um, we've come a long way. We're... Um, you know, we've, we've done a lot of really good things. We have terrific people working for us. We are different. Like you just said, you know, we're union in a number of markets. We're non-union in others. We like both. Um, you know, we, um, the things that um, matter the most to us are 
you know, do we have really good people? Are they empowered to do great things in their local market? Are we focused on safety and taking care of our customers and all the things that make any business successful? Um, but I'm just proud to be, you know, around really great people all the time. We've built a really good team and um, I think we, you know, we care for each other and we care about the company. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not, a, it's not, I, I wouldn't, say I'm under any pressure compared to anybody else. The guys who are under pressure are the guys out in the field every day. You know, they've got, they've got a lot of responsibility. They're operating under difficult conditions. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's hard work and pressure. What I do is a lot, uh, you know, is a lot different. Um, and I'm just uh, proud to be around them. Uh, how hard it is for you to separate business and family? Because for me, it's very hard sometimes. I uh, got my kids calling me all the time and say, hey, where are you gonna, when are you going to get home? You know, so I know you probably have a very busy schedule, you know. So how it yeah. is, how hard it is to separate those two business um, and pleasure, you know, and staying with your family? Yeah, no, it's a good question. This is, this is the worst thing, right? Um, it allows <laughs> you to do a lot of, lot of, you know, allows you to do a lot of things um, that you wouldn't otherwise be able to accomplish. But it, I don't turn it off when I should turn it off. Um, and I'm constantly checking it and just like anybody else, it's distracting, but, um, it is my family, uh, you know, after almost 20 years of doing it, they're kind of used to, they're kind of used to it. Uh, they they put they up have with to, it. right? <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, they're, uh, they're no, so far so good. They're all, they're all terrific. All right. What do you see for the future of our roofing industry right now, especially for the new generation that's coming up, you know, and or even uh, because you guys are a very, you know, visual, you know, you guys are very uh, visualized company. So for uh, entrepreneurs too as well, you know, people that say, hey, I want to open my own business. W what kind of message you can give to those people? Um, you know, assuming uh, we're talking about outside the, uh, the current circumstances with, yes. um, the coronavirus, just in general, um, I think it's an unbelievable uh, industry to be in. Um, you know, we have we do a, we do really important work. Um, we do necessary work. Um, we're part of all every other industry. So we're in government. We're in healthcare. We're in entertainment. We're in real estate. We're in schools. Um, kind of you name it. They all need the kind of work we do. Right. Um, there's a shortage. There's a shortage, certainly, of field talent. Um, there's a shortage of management, uh, project managers, estimators, kind of you name it. And so, if you had, when you look at an industry that's got, it's important. It's got it's got to grow. If anything else is going to grow, roofing is going to grow as well because it's just part of the infrastructure. Not in the wood, but there's a bit of a talent shortage. That means that the people who are in it and the people who apply themselves and work hard on it are going to have a great opportunity. Um, okay. And we think that's true for a long time to come. All right. Any message out there, you know, for for your, your followers, my followers? I, I know I, I have many people from Tech America that might be listening to this, and even friends, you know, uh, um, competitors, whatever. There's any message of hope, especially due to this coronavirus. Any message you want to give to them, to their families, well, and loved ones? Well, first of all, you have a lot more followers than I do. Okay, so <laughs> which is undoubtedly true and will be for some time. Uh, um, no, I mean, the only message is um, I think just uh, keep learning, keep uh, learning from each other. Um, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on training and education in our company, but um, LinkedIn and other social media and other media sources in general are a great place to do that, especially when there's you know, something, something that we're not all, none of us are, have been prepared for. Um, yeah, so we're absolutely. all trying to figure it out on the fly as is, you know, the government and everybody else. Um, and the other thing is just stay positive. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, we, we are a, um, a very resourceful uh, industry. Um, we are in a tremendous economy in the United States. Uh, we've faced lots of challenges in the past. And um, I think if we stick together and um, take care of each other, um, work hard, um, you know, we'll be strong and we'll be for a long time. Well, I appreciate you, you know, giving me your time. I know it's 10 minutes. I got to go. Thank you very much. I really, you know, appreciate you 